Yeah, we use the um check all the time. It works out very well. It probably picks up another, for an hour long enablement session, it probably picks up another three to four minutes of stuff that I don't need. Hey, that stitch function's working fantastic. I've tried to, I, I've tried to do. It literally has saved me hours and hours of editing on my classes. Fantastic. It saves me so much time, it's, it's ridiculous. Share my workflow and guess what? I don't even have to fire up DaVinci Resolve. Nice one. But uh, welcome to Time Bolt Office Hours on May 23rd, 2024. You're live with Doug and Quinson. We're here to check your workflows, answer questions, and generally just make sure that you get the best out of Time Bolt. I did send out an email about our new Stitch program. I can review that right now. I figured uh, before we start, I would just go ahead. I know we're going to get some people on the line today. Do we have anybody with any specific questions? No, I just uh, was joining to listen in. I might have some questions later on. Thank you. Okay, great. And real, one quick question, Arlene, is, is what type of content do you make? I, I run a school to train matchmakers. I'm trying to step up my social media game and um, doing a lot of videos and things like that. Okay, are these like when you are these like shorts? Are they for YouTube? The content that I'm going to start creating is ideally for social media, just to promote, especially because I have a course, a new course starting in September. I'm just trying to figure out what I can do, what I need to farm out, and I do have the time application. Okay, great. Well, uh, jump in if you have any specific questions. I generally just like to understand like what type of content people make that way when I'm giving these explanations something that uh, I can make relevant to you. Yeah, no, I appreciate that. Just sure. mainly marketing, uh, what do you call it? Social media. Marketing, Thank social you. media stuff. Okay, absolutely. Does anyone does anyone here have a specific question that you'd like answered? Any issues? One, one thing I'd like to maybe go over is we do a lot of uh, enablement videos and I'm very comfortable using your tool when it comes to uh, going to do the uh, three keys with the B and the O and the uh, S and everything. And I like doing the one with the B where I can back off all the things in the front because we start the recording a little bit earlier, make sure we can do the audio check and video check and everything. And then I can use the B to remove all that front end, but then the meat of the uh, video, we have like maybe two sessions in there. I want to grab the middle session and I want to grab the second session without having to bring it into DaVinci Resolve. And I figure your uh, snitch thing would be a uh, stitch thing would be good for that. I figured maybe if we have time, we could go over that today too. Why don't we just, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and let's just review very quickly the quick keys on how to rapidly edit your timeline. That way, when you get into time bolt, you can get through this thing up and then we'll focus on uh, stitch and what you can do, because I believe everybody will have an interest in that as well yes i would <laughs> and is hey, that I'm, dean yeah but how are you good how about yourself good man just as a just a very quick review because everybody see my sex my screen okay great just a really quick review the first thing you're going to do when you drop your file into time bolt make sure your automations are correct you get your sound detection uh settings correct just go with the default values okay and if you're going to change and play around with it if it's your first time just work anywhere between minus 35 to minus 42 db okay or minus 30 to minus 42 db and that will give you more or less uh capture more or less green but typically just right out the gate our math is going to get that for you now the key is, is that once you've, you've got your silence detection settings, you may want to run um check and you just hit start audio transcription. Do people hear you guys run an unscripted video? I know TJ is. Yeah, we use the um check all the time. It works out very well. It probably picks up another, for an hour long enablement session, it probably picks up another three to four minutes of stuff that I don't need. That's perfect. Is that once um check runs, it'll open up a browser like this. And we actually have a way that you can purchase your first three are on, uh, are on time bolt. Okay. Just, you can test it out, see how it works. And once it runs, you're actually able to buy credits as well. So it can be a, basically a, a three click process to remove all the ums and ahs out of your video it says it run after it runs, know that once it runs, you can download the JSON file that, that, uh, contains a transcription or download your SRT file as well, which helps in some instances. Sometimes I do that after I actually run a file, but once that runs, you'll end up with this uncheck screen. And this is more of kind of just kind of winging it video here, but you just basically are able to run your false start detection. Just know that any of these, you can actually add any unique word tick phrase. If you have your own, you know what I'm saying, or something like that, that we didn't already put in here, you can actually add it. It's not a predefined list that you are relegated to. And we actually find 50% more ums and ahs than transcription-based competitors, even though that's not what we do. We're not an AI transcription-based editor. We use sound detection versus AI. But this is very quickly what I want you to learn is that once you download this, once you put this file in, put this on 1.5x speed, put preview on 1.5x. That way, when you hit the space bar, you direct yourself. I like it. I like it. You are previewing automatically every time you hit the space bar at 1.5x speed. There's no reason to watch it at normal speed. Then I want you to remember, all you got to remember is four keys, okay? USOB. Like that, like, even if you remember only three, it's SOB. Design, I think it's what you do here is, let's say I wanted to cut the middle of the scene. 
instead of going here and doing create split, just literally click the S key. And if you can see, it creates a split right there. Let's say I wanted to cut everything before this. I don't have to then go like this. That's an extra click, two extra clicks touching a mouse pad, right? Let's say I want to cut that what comes before it, I hit the B key and that stands for back cut. You could be going through and you're like, oh, I didn't want that. I just hit the B key. See how that goes away? You don't have to do anything else. U S O. And then there's to O, it turns the existing scene off. If I'm going through, I'm like, oh, I don't want this. My I hit O and it jumps to the next scene, we 40 reps right? right? Imagine USOB, literally you'll just press those keys. That is, that's what's important. Let's say you've got a long zoom call. You didn't start until 10 minutes. or there's more rapport in the middle that you just want to get rid of. I want to cut everything to the back of it. I'll basically put my cursor here and I'll hit B. And as I hit, as I hold down B, watch this time disappear, right? And it just cut out everything up to that point. So you don't have to go B, 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 B. O. That is USOB, probably the most important keys. And then for when you're given tutorials, things like that, you can enhance your footage like this. You've got punch values. Okay, does everyone here use, does anyone here use punch on like show people where to focus? You can basically punch in with the P key. Okay, and you can see it turns to 125, 150, 175. It's the same as going here and going, doing something like this. Now, if I have a talking head video, if I punch in, you're going to see that she's out of focus here, right? She's out of focus. You can go into settings and actually change the punch value defaults right here. So let's say I want to do 108, maybe 120, and this would be like 130. When I punch in, these values are going to be much more subtle, right? And then if I, let's say that uh, it has a multiple cuts in between, I want to, I, I do um, option in my arrow keys. That puts in the top 120. The next time I, the next scene I go to, imagine she was there. I hit P, it goes top 120. So you don't have to continually like hit the arrow keys. It actually defaults to the previous last use, which is very helpful when you're given tutorials. I understand you may not use that now, but it's a very helpful feature to know. There, the second very unique and helpful feature is fast forward silences. This is the only time you're going to go in. I can basically fast forward any silence short. Like if you're doing mouse clicks matter, you can say anything less than three seconds or two seconds. Fast forward by three X, right? I wouldn't mute it because it actually doesn't sound like a chipmunk and it doesn't like have a break in the sound. Any cuts that were lower than three seconds will actually be sped up. You'd still see the mouse, but it would just move faster, right? That makes sense. And then also for GoPro footage, when I'm doing like action footage on my GoPro, this is the only time that you can add time to a timeline. Okay. You can actually... I don't know, I say speed it up, but it actually slows it down to half speed. So you can catch slow mo, which is great for like 60 frames per second ca capture and those types of things. And then for all your unscripted video, okay, or even unscripted video, if you're talking to a screen, there's no reason you wouldn't want to hit this button, activate turbo mode. And what you have here, you, who doesn't want to talk 12% faster? Because we don't use transcripts and we're based on time, we can actually speed up your rate of speech as well. You can put this at any marker. We believe 1.125X is the right amount. You're not going to sound like a chipmunk. Arlene, let's say you're doing a short and you've got uh, this video is like 65 seconds, right? Well, you can only have it 60 seconds long. What you're going to do is you're going to put this time limit. And this isn't that type of video, but you're going to put that time limit at 60 seconds. And that's just going to speed up everything in that video, even all the stuff you cut to meet that 60 second time limit right within the software. And again, you're not going to sound like a chipmunk. The last feature that I'd like to show you uh, while we're still on this generic timeline is chapter markers. What you're going to do is you can just you right click and you type in chapter one. Okay. You can see it's marked with this. If I were to go in here and just remove it, it would remove that star as well, right? But chapter one, this is really cool. This is going to save you a whole lot of time. You don't have to go back and rewatch your stuff after it's already all cut up and the time is even more precise. This is chapter three. You can do that. You can, they can make them as long as you want, whatever you want to do. But even as you go apply and activate turbo mode here, that's going to speed up your whole rate of speech by 1.125 X. So that means if you're, if you had put chapters in your video, all your points would, uh, wouldn't work. But with, we've made it to where you can download this chapter text file and it takes into account how you sped up time as well. So the advantage of this is once it's downloaded, check this out. These are formatted to copy paste right into the body of YouTube. Like as you upload your video, the first, I, first thing I do is I upload my video and in the description, I copy and paste this right into the YouTube description and you've got a fully chaptered YouTube video. That is, that's how I use chapters. Another cool feature, okay, that we haven't talked about yet that's relatively new, that is brand new really, is our Stitch program. Hey, that Stitch function's working fantastic for I've me. Tried to, I, I've tried to get that Stitch fun function's working good for you? Oh, it's working fantastic, Doug. And that's awesome. It's working really good. That's awesome, man. It literally has saved me hours and 
hours of editing for my classes. Fantastic. Awesome. Can you tell a little bit about how you use it? I do online training and every session is recorded. Download the video, of course. And then I have an intro and outro that I like to use. I bring in my intro and then I drop in my training and then I drop in my outro. I click turbo activate. I put it to 1.13 and I run it. And my training sessions are four hours long. It can, takes all the dead time out of it. And I have a beautiful video that I can upload. I don't have to worry about going into Camtasia or something else and putting the intro and outro and then re-downloading it. It saves me so much time. It's not even, it's ridiculous. That's awesome. Well, thank you for sharing that. Th let me give you an example of, we tell people to go out and if you're doing something interesting in life to go film it, maybe you've got a GoPro. That's exactly what I've done. I've got a cool dog. Now this is a different type of use case in that I've got a dog and it's not about talking. Okay. It's not about like, I I'm not communicating. What I actually do here. Okay. I don't want to cut out silent sections. I just want to ginsu up my timeline because I can, I showed you the USOB keys. That's how you can do this faster than any other editor. Okay. Still with this, I'll show you, I've already got a timeline edited up in here. I save my cuts. I'm going to reapply my JSON file. Okay. That's how if you basically add your raw file, you go find where your JSON file is JSON. Okay. With this JSON file, it, this is all my cut instructions. This is all the stuff I wanted to keep, but what you're seeing right here. The one thing I have not talked to you about yet is the markers. What this is like a, the recipe for success when it comes to like that we see like with GoPro and these vlog style type videos is that you're taking out the best parts when you start watching, you know, how you can see like the highlights, like you're, what you're going to see inside, they'll take out like 30 seconds of highlights and then they'll throw a yeah. promo reel on there. And then it'll have the meat of the presentation of the content. Well, that's what we do with markers and stitch. If you're going through on your first, yeah. you basically press M and it adds a marker. And what that does is every time you press M, you can see this mark duration adding up right here. Okay. As you go through, you're adding new markers and you can see, I could create a short or, or something to that effect by basically knowing what my time limit is. I've got basically 48 seconds worth of mark cuts, okay? And I do keep only mark cuts. And now only my mark cuts are kept. So just imagine you've already gone to the video and you're like, these are the important parts. All that you're gonna see is just the cool stuff in the video that I thought were cool parts that we're gonna add to a highlight. Now I got some dog fights in there. That's some good content for our, for our, morning, for our morning office hours, right? What I'm gonna do here is this is where I can basically do export video, okay? Or what I do is I can also save as new clips, okay? Very soon this process is gonna change because what what I can what I will then do is actually add audio. Adding audio to this stuff gets a little bit more complicated at this phase until we get it to where you can stitch and then add audio to multiple files before it all stitches. But right now what I do is uh, I, I basically am able to uh, render this. I apply my background audio and render out a file. Then I do command Z to undo keep only mark cuts. Okay. Command Z to undo keep only mark cuts. So I'm back to my original timeline. But now what I do is save my timeline cuts because it was all complete. I don't have to render out a file or anything like that. I'll then go to stitch. And this is what we do. I hit add clip and this is where I have my intro. Okay. I have my intro with no audio. I double click that. Yeah. I add in our, t I add in a teaser reel. Then I add in my main and with this main file, we still have to add the cut list to it. Right? We, this is like the main file. Now you have to apply the, you have to tell it what it's supposed to cut. So you hit apply JSON file and you do this. So now what I can do is I can preview this. So typically this is going to have background audio to it, but typically this is going to have background audio to it. I, I just think the process is a little difficult to, to teach right now because you have to add the background audio. Like if you're adding two files, I have to render this file, then render this file and then add, apply the background audio. So it ends up like this because I, it's something about having intro time bolted. This is what it ends up like. You can actually reorder these and move them around. So it ends up like this. <laughs> Look at that, just that dog and just dough bomb. Like, what the hell was that? And then I have my teaser reel, right? Just that 10 second deal, Doug's dog, and then it flows right into uh, the main video file. We're working to where you'll only see what's cut when you do that, but and unless you're adding background audio, this is a great way to set up your video. And once we get background audio, there's again, there would be no faster way. To. You hit basically export video. You're able to add your logo. We have our fast forward silences, your output resolution, right? You got up to 4K, 60 frames per second. And this is how you just match your frames per second, hit export video. And if you noticed, 
now I've got video in front of my main file. Well, now wouldn't all the markers, the, the chapter markers for YouTube be off by that much? Well, it's all actually it's accounted for it's right here. Important. You go download ch ch chapters text file. That is how you use Stitch. Do we have any questions that I can answer? Hey, Doug, I have one. Uh, <clears throat> when we look at this clip right here, I like the idea of getting rid of the front end of it, like we talked about where we're doing the radio check and the audio and video is working and stuff. So all that stuff gets cleared out by doing the, uh, the B key and cleaning out the whole front end and stuff. So now I have like 45 minutes of video, but that video I want to break into uh, two pieces. What's the best way of doing grabbing the first piece and then grabbing the second piece and making them uh, separate files for that. Is that something where I would use uh, Stitch or do you have like uh, another button? Like, let's say I grab the first one and I, re I remove the front end. I got the first piece and I get to the end of that first piece. Is there like uh, a forward button that does the same thing like the B button does? The O key. Yeah, the o key. I'm in though, TJ. Just hit copy, duplicate your, I duplicate your video since you're needing it. It's not joining it or anything. Just duplicate yeah. the one video and just back cut and forward cut like yeah. up to that. That's point. also possible. So that way you've got yep. two, you got two separate videos that you're talking about. And I, and I can do that because the, uh, the thing that I like about doing is, and I'm stealing a little bit from what Dan talked about earlier and stuff is that the laptop that I have is not very powerful. It's getting a DaVinci Resolve uh, fired up is uh, most difficult. So what I do now too is with the uh, Stitch tool is I do the intro and the outro. I can bring it right into a uh, time bolt, do it there. And then I get my new cuts that we talked about there. And I don't even have to fire up DaVinci Resolve. And you know me, I got the chapter markers already done. I got the um check already done. But this last piece that you showed me uh, in regards to the uh, stitch feature about grabbing the first, killing the front end, grabbing the first video, grabbing the second video, that'll take care of my workflow. And guess what? I don't even have to fire up DaVinci Resolve. Appreciate it, guys. Nice one. Well, the only reason I uh, mentioned saving the cuts is because you can always go back to them. If you're worried that you're going to miss out on the cuts when you're making your second video or your first video, I always advise save them. Even when uh, uh, Doug mentioned uh, keep only marked cuts, it's always better to just save your cuts so that you always have them. Uh, and, yeah. and you're not uh, lost without them. Yeah, yeah I, I never get rid of them. it takes a lot of work to get to them, yeah. I never get rid of them because it, it's a lot of work to get through them and stuff, especially after you run uncheck through them. I don't want to have to do that part again. They never go away. They're, they're always uh, saved for me. So I appreciate yeah. that. Great point. When you do markers, when you are finding your key moments, definitely save your timeline cuts uh, prior to doing keep only mark cuts. That way, if you end up making a bunch of changes, you can just reverse out of it, reapply your timeline, right? The other That's nice it. issue that we had too was, is that I would do the chapter markers and I bring it into DaVinci Resolve and then I put the intro and the outro to it, but then the chapter markers would be off. I know my intro is only 10 seconds, but still this way I can do it now with your product all the way. And then when I do the chapter markers with the intro and the outro already in there, my chapter markers are set solid. That's good. Yeah, the only thing that we're just working on that we're getting approved is just the audio piece of it because that audio piece is just adding that extra boom it's high quality it feels like a real high quality production value that it literally didn't take you any more time to do and pull out we're really excited about all uh, also the use of turbo and stitch works as well my question is what i've been doing is i have my intro and outro taken care of and i'm just downloading my raw video of my recorded session and i just drop it into stitches uh, into stitching into the stitch in that stitch, just dropping in that raw video, it doesn't apply the sound detection to it. I have to do that before I drop it into stitch. If you have your cuts, right? Let's say you want to use a uh, stitch and yeah. this is your video that you have cut in. Let's say your Zoom file and it's already cut up. Yeah. You have to save the JSON, right? Okay. It will give you a JSON file. And then when you go into stitch and then you select the same video, oh. it will give you an option, apply the JSON file. You can just apply it. And then when you render it out, it will have those cuts because stitch doesn't do sound detection. It's just a tool, which is a companion tool to the main app. That's where it gets the information from. So this file is basically how it transfers data between those two uh, applications. Our goal is not for you to have to go in and render a bunch of videos already and then stitch them all together and re-render. -re Our goal is, is for you not to have to render anything, right? Like you run it in time, but you, you find the cut list and you save them as a JSON file. And then you put those raw videos back into stitch, apply your cut list to each one of them. And when you hit render, you can then go do the dishes, walk the dog, hang out with the wife. For example, husband. yeah, for example, this is like one video. I can add the same video again and add another JSON file to it. And I can add the same video again. So you get the point, right? So you can add as many videos as you want, have individual JSON files for each of those videos. But if you have three Zoom calls, you can add those all in, have individual cuts for each of those Zoom calls smash them all together and just send them off. Can you just do that one more time showing how yeah. you selected the J? I have the video and what I just, okay, I haven't just even created a new, I just, I just open a new, well, okay. Real quick. Yeah. Sorry. Maybe you can also show why you're doing this is if I'm, if I have my raw video and I have a separate audio file, how do I stitch those two together to make sure that they're in time and all of that goodness before okay. I run the uncheck on it. Sure. Let's get to that also in a bit. This one will specifically be about Zoom calls. We'll get to Drew's question in a bit. The first thing you do is select your first video file. In, in my case, it's a simple video MP4. Yep. I open up my Explorer, select the file, get it in time bold. And it, the first thing you see is time bold. It process the file, get your cuts. Now mm -hmm. what I want to do is I want to have another file too, right? So this is the file I have. I'm going to
to save the JSON for this file. So for that, you go to the bottom and click on this big JSON button. Yes, it sick. saves the JSON file. Okay. <laughs> now I'm gonna, what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to a second video. Let's say I want one more video that I want to save. I'll select one more bit video and the cuts are already made and I'm going to save another JSON file. This is named differently. So it's a different name. Now I'm going to open Stitch. To open Stitch, you can go over here. This is called, uh, yeah. there's a shortcut key over here or you can even go up here, mm -hmm. multi-file utility Stitch. Click on this button. Now it will be blank at first and then you click on add clip or you can even drag and drop clips. So if you want to drag and drop stuff, you can even do that. I can go over here. I'm just going to select my videos and drag and drop them. Mm -hmm. Now I can rearrange them if I want to, but this yeah. arrangement is fine. Now I'm going to click on the clip that I want. Okay. The file that I want, I'm going to click on apply JSON file and oh. I'm going to go to the file that I have here. This is the first one. And the second one is called a uh, video mp 4 I can even do this. I can hover over and it will tell me uh, what the name of the file is. I know which JSON file to apply. It's called video.mp4. I know that the JSON file will be called video.mp4 underscore whatever, how, how many ever I have. And that, that's it. And now when you render this out with whatever uh, values you have, uh, it's going to stitch them both together. So these are going to be cut up videos which are stitched together and you had to render them once. You can have two 20 hour videos. It doesn't matter how long the videos are. Uh, there's going to stitch them all together. Yeah. Like you, they're just, you know, this is for accounting for the places that like you're just, it, it, they're shot at different times, different locations. Or again, like you, if it, let's say, for example, you had markers, you're like, play around with the markers, like you'll eventually get the hang of it. It's a new system, new process to learn. But uh, if you had markers as well, you wouldn't have to render out just the markers. You would basically use the same raw video twice. And one of them, you would apply the JSON where just the markers were saved. And then the other one, you would apply the JSON where all the cuts were saved. You're only render, it'll be the same raw file, but two different cut files on the same file. And then you can render them all together as one video as well and throw yeah. your teaser in the middle, right? So now to get to Drew's question, um, if you have a separate audio file and a video file, usually Timebolt will not support such a, a process uh, directly inside Timebolt because if you, as you can see, the Timebolt timeline is meant for like linear cutting. So you have one file, you cut it up, but we have a lot of tools uh, which are for advanced users, which can uh, combine multiple files together and give you like a a useful timeline, which looks like this, even if you have a separate audio file. And for that, I'm just going to do something. Let me just get some clips. I can uh, show you an example. Does anybody have a question while Quince is getting stuff together? Doug, I think I told you on Quinston that uh, I took those dash cam wave files, use stitch to do combine 160 of them. Cause as you know, those dash cam things are only like a minute, 30 seconds each. It took a bit, but uh, it stitched them all up. And then how I work, I just remove all the audio from it anyways. I just let people see that thing. And then I can just combine it up and stuff. So it nice. worked pretty good. Obviously it's not, that's not what stitch is made for, but guess what? I got another use case for you now. Yeah, it's just like a Ginsu knife, like our <laughs> Swiss army knife. I know it's branded and yeah. whatnot, but that's what we're really looking at time bold as for video communications, whether it's sending a quick video message or stitching together bunch of dash bro gopro cams right let's say i have two video files right two files i have one audio file and one video file and this is just for example purposes but it could be any files as many number of files as you want but what happens is that because these are two separate files and time bolt algorithm it works on one file at a time we have to use another program you can use premiere profile pro davinci resolve anything but I prefer to use DaVinci Resolve and I would recommend everybody if you are going to do like a complex project, DaVinci Resolve is free to use. So you can use it as much as you want. It's a free pr program. You can see a free download here. The advanced version has a bunch of stuff which you can use for advanced projects, but in most cases, you're not going to need it. You can use DaVinci so Resolve. I, I think I know where you're going, right? So I do this yeah. in Final Cut Pro, right? Where I take it and I create a synchronized file. So you're saying create the synchronized file. Oh, you have Final Cut Pro, right? Oh, yeah. then it's going to be in. So I was wondering if I could just load the files into Time Bolt before having to go into Final Cut Pro, create the synchronized file, and then bring it back out to put it in the time bolt to do the cuts. Have you used the uh, Final Cut Pro multicam feature? Uh, the yes. DaVinci Resolve multicam stuff? What you do is you take the audio file, you create a multicam of the audio file, and then bring that into DaVinci Resolve, into Final Cut Pro, and then add the video on top. Sync up clips inside time bolt. Like, right. I, we understand that you don't Yeah, you can to... sync up clips in the time setup. If that's the yeah. question, then no, you can't. If I'm doing separate audio, I'm just going to have to synchronize the clips inside of Final Cut Pro, export them, and then put it in the time bolt to no, do the you cuts. don't export them. No, yeah. no. Yeah. No. no, wait. Uh, if you want to get to a cut up timeline, you don't need to export anything from time from Final Cut Pro. Uh, I do if I want to run I'm check on it. I'll just take my audio file because the audio is usually the one with the higher quality uh, stuff, right? So you can take the audio file, drop it in. It will give you an audio timeline. You can run um check on, on it, and then you can export an FCP XML multicam. And this multicam is what you can add video to in Final Cut Pro. It, it, it ag agreed, right? But it, yeah. it's going to be more difficult to try to synchronize that audio when it's cut up into Final Cut Pro rather than... No, it's not. No, it's no, not. That's a, no, it's so not. Can you fire real, up not. your Final Cut Pro? Yes. Uh, you're going to do like a cup check on me, aren't you, man? It's going to be like once... It, it takes like one second. 
No. <laughs> Let me show you on DaVinci Resolve. Uh, in Time Vault, we have uh, extensions for Final Cut Pro, uh, DaVinci, uh, for uh, DaVinci Resolve and Premiere Pro. If you go to this page over here, in Time Vault, you can go to Multi-File Utilities and in the menu bar, and you can just click on DaVinci Resolve Integration, and this will take you to a page where you can learn how to install it and how to use it. Uh, I, I already have this installed, so I'm not going to get to the steps because you can already have a video. There's a video here of how to install it. I already have it installed. When I bring in both these files, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in both these files in DaVinci Resolve. So it's the video and the audio file. I drop it in and I'm going to take the video file and make the timeline, take the audio file and add it to the timeline, select them all, right click and go to auto align clips uh, based on waveform. Yeah, now they're aligned. And now what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to go to time bolt. Uh, in, in this case, the audio is going to come from um, the dot wave file because that usually is the one that's recorded with the high quality microphone. So I'm going to drop it in. So these are the cuts. As assuming that these are the correct cuts, you can even edit them if you want, depending on the sound. Save the JSON. So the, run on check. Timeline cuts. You can run on check if you want. Yeah, you run on so, check all that stuff. Yeah, run on check whatever. You edit it and finalize your cuts. Then you can save those cuts. This and this is the same. This whether you use the JSON button here or whether you use the save timeline cuts, that both those things are the same thing. Once you have your JSON file, which I have over here, I'm going to go to DaVinci Resolve again. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to let's say this is the timeline. I'm going to open up the extension. And I'm going to say apply timeline, uh, apply JSON file. And I'm going to go to JSON file that I saved. And it's basically editing like a multi, multi file timeline. What it did was it took the cuts from the audio and applied it to the video and the audio file at the same time. Go to FCPX multicam. Okay. And this yeah. is the, uh, the exact instructions how to do that. The only thing you won't be able to do, you'll still be able to use uh, chapter markers if you're not adding time into your video okay like if you're just doing this to like do like a pre-sync as long as you don't add time you can add chapter markers to your wav file you can do those things you just won't be able to have uh which you just won't be able to have like punch in values and stuff done you're basically dealing with just audio that keeps you from having to re-render that will work using your wav file is going to work beautifully for you throw it in multicam and the first time you do it it'll just take a couple minutes to learn but after that it'll sequence and the difference between you and i you're really fast on a computer and i'm kind of like a you were working pretty fast with those dogs with the frisbee and stuff don't cut yourself <laughs> short my friend you, you just gotta get audio only wav file we're gonna throw in i'm gonna re-update my silence detection settings the cuts are made run um check save the json file no fcb xml no. oh so i'm sure yeah so this is a 30 my video you're actually going to choose your frames per second let's just say this one's a 30 frames per second the the file will export the multicam file and then now do what but <laughs> what open just double click on the file it'll open final control you can go render, render queue and do it i never really just double click on it. It'll open. It just opens. Uh, what yeah, do it I just, just opens. Zoom. I just, little... just hit OK. OK. And open it up. Okay, now, the... once you get this timeline, right, what you need to do is, this is, a, this is not where you add the video. You double click on this. You, you see that? I know it's really fast. I just want to slow down for everyone. So they can use double click in this inside the video or the WAV file. See that? W, the one that uh, we just got the FCP yep. multicam. OK. And then, and then you add the angle and the video. So add angle. And then drag the video in here. Get your source video. Okay. You can in, in, import the video in there. So now I take the actual video file. And then you can drop in a timeline directly actually check this out drop it in the timeline directly and then what do and i then do I... sync then sync that to the monitoring angle sync see you're going to have choose the second one sync selection to monitor yep. angle that's what i was going to choose and now when you get back in the now, check this out right. just turn on the video i think the video is set to the second the first one the first icon on the timeline i'll watch the video instructions and get it going and the thing was the cuts were created based on the audio and then you go into the multicam and add the video inside the blocks to the bottom I think the first audio put it at the bottom i can't it's not do it and then take the angle, the second angle, put it, put it at the top, oh. and then, yes. And, no, it's right, do that. And then put take the third audio and put it in the second, and then delete the... <laughs> delete like a delete. Jigsaw puzzle. Delete the last one. Yeah, With the, yeah. yeah, you can just the uh, click on the arrow key and see what select delete. And now yeah. go back to the main timeline. There you go. But, but I just, I actually did all of the, these ones by hand. The only other thing for me is, because I say um a lot, <laughs> and when I do the um checks, right, it takes a lot of it out, and I go in and edit manually edit what it doesn't catch what i find is that the, the video is just because i'm cutting so much of the conversations out in some instances right it, it, it just looks jumpy i'll have a picture of a gun i'll say i'll start talking about it i'll say um or something like that or like uh this or um this i take that um, this out and then it, i cut that out if you see the picture of the gun then when you see that switch to another screen it, it's just jumpy i'm just trying to i just gotta say i don't have to make as many cuts but it's just uh, like i'll send you a link to my to my last video so you can check it out and you tell me what i'm doing wrong is it a cut that you're saying it's a cut thing inside time bolt is it not in other words i have to cut so much of the video out right because the um check gets about i'll say 60 65 percent of it and then i'll go in and finish it but when the video is done it looks very choppy it goes from like the scene it's not one fluid scene if that makes sense yeah that's going to happen if you're saying um inside the middle of a sentence correct that's like... my problem <laughs> Well, I, I, that's just kind of a style thing. But yep. what's nice is if you can keep those ums relegated to, they're usually like the continuation of sentences. Those cut out and it just 
cuts between two sentences because you're also going to be doing a WAV. It's not like you want to add any transitions or anything in there like that. Is it just your face or like, are you uh, talking with people? No, I'm just, I'm typically just doing reviews or specs of the guns or knives or whatever I'm going to do in that particular day. Oh, that's, that, that's right. You're going to be doing reviews. Yeah. That's the yeah. thing. That's going to be the trade-off. You're going to, I don't know in reviews, if you want to fast forward silences or like show what you're doing and punch in, like punch in and punch out. That's those types of things. Those help high jump cuts as well. Right. right? I, I, I don't think that's any, that's going to help at, at all. I feel like this is more of a, a video thing than a time bold thing or any cut related thing. It's more of like, uh, like, for example, when I record videos, I make sure that um, if I'm going to say a sentence, I have like, I stop before the sentence starts and I, and then I think about the sentence and then I say it without any arms in the middle, because I know that no matter how much time I stop, time is going to cut it out. So it doesn't matter how long the, I, I, I wait to think about the sentence. Um, yeah. As long as I know what the sentence is going to be afterwards, I'm just going to say it without the arms and then it's going to be great. I think it's more of a, like a, and it's not even like making a, a script. It's mostly about just figuring out what you're going to say before you say it. And then just stop until you want to, you figure that out, I guess. When you stop talking, time doesn't even happen when you go to time was going to just yank it out. That's a great point. Quincy. J is it uh, Jason? <laughs> We've been saying your name 10,000 times and you've been so quiet. Uh, do you have any specific questions? But you're here on the call, so we want to be able to provide value. If you have a specific question, why are your cuts off funny? Why are they cutting off funny? I think it means they're too aggressive. As you can see, the start of the file is very aggressive it's literally at the start of the the way you can adjust this is by using this filter sound level value it says in the description here make more negative to capture more audio which means that if you want to capture more green stuff you make it more negative if i make it like minus 50 for example and update it it's going to try and capture more green now in, in this file it doesn't work because it's already pretty distinct but when i say softness of the cut essentially these two values these three values essentially something like this so it's this is set to two five it's too aggressive i can make it five or i can even make it seven five and i can increase the padding to maybe 0 0.1 and 0 0.15 now what happens is that, as you can see there is a slight softness the start of the cut which means that it's going to be a more relaxed video it's not going to be incredibly aggressive where every cut starts off very aggressively so based on these settings over here you can adjust the softness of the of the cut in most cases what happens is if you don't have great audio you will need to play around with this uh with these two values but if you have great audio then uh, this value is automatic detected with Heimbold, and then you can just play around with uh, these two values to templatize exactly what you what kind of feel you want to get from the video so if you have a relaxed video you can increase the left padding have a more relaxed feel if you're giving like an information video you can make these video these uh, values more aggressive I uh, if you're doing a short for example uh, maybe you want to do a short for TikTok you can get really aggressive with these cuts like I, I can do 0 0.01 and I can just really make it really cutty like very aggressive that will cut off the so, ends of your words though right but it doesn't matter on TikTok right well what's interesting is, is if he already has yeah. subtitles he's asking about like subtitles already being baked in that means he's probably re purposing content from some other thing that was already cut yeah, but if that's the case like as quinston was saying you put it at 0.2 on left and right padding okay because that's the maximum amount of pad like that is the padding level on these other types of ai based editors you can't get aggressive like you can with time bolt if you put that padding on the left and right at 0.2 you're probably going to have less uh spillage of like text that was already done is that what you're asking yeah. Jason. Uh, if you're looking to rearrange the cuts, Timebolt is not the tool to do that. Timebolt is used to cut out, like subtract stuff fast. For rearranging, I'll say if you want to free service, then DaVinci Resolve is the best. The point I, I was trying to make with my earlier comment was that you can adjust how the video feels based on how quickly the cuts move through. Like you can adjust that and give that sort of perception. Um, informative style videos have aggressive cuts, uh, vlogs have relaxed cuts. There's something called an L cut, which you can't do in Timebolt, but if you export a JSON file, oh sorry, an, export like an XML or a JSON file, take it into Premiere Micro, you can extend the audio and make an L cut or a J cut. And that's also something that you can uh, do. Uh, we don't do that in Timebolt, mostly because uh, because Timebolt needs to be a standalone application with a different uh, customer base all together. Uh, the advanced stuff we leave to um, the NLE, the Vinci Resolve and stuff. Perfect. Well, it sounds like we got you. We got your question answered for you, Jason. It's so funny seeing Jason. Funny. Uh, we've got your question for you. For you answered. I'm just going to go ahead and close this down. That's it for Timebolt Office Hours on May 23rd. Don't forget to the like, subscribe, and of course the notification bell. When we go live. Thanks for joining us. And of course, we're using Timebolt, and we're out of time. See y'all later.